the end will come. And we want to be in the right place, the right side. We want to be at Jesus' side, one with Him. That's the safe place to be. The Word of God reveals who will pass through the tribulation and who will not. God has a purpose and place for the earth and His people. Learn more with Gloria Copeland and her special guest Billy Brim on today's Believer's Voice of Victory. Hello everybody, welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Billy Brim from Prayer Mountain in the Ozarks is with us in person today, telling us about the end time and about the book of Revelation. We're getting the blessing. Glory to God. Just for reading it. We're blessed. Hallelujah. It says anybody that reads this book, anybody that hears this book, going to get blessed. So, so we're claiming that blessing. Yes. And we are now into chapter 7. We've done already uh, last October. We did two, two weeks. And then in November we did two weeks. Now this is our third session, so you really need those from before. And uh, we're, we're today now in the seventh chapter of Revelation, and the church has already been raptured. Yay! And the Lord is holding back. He's having his angels hold back some, uh, some evils that are come on the earth uh, until he gets the 144,000 seals. So we talked about the 144,000 last week, and they are then God's tools. They're going throughout the whole earth, 144,000 Jews, 12,000 from each tribe, and uh, they're preaching the gospel, the good news. And the good news now is Jesus is coming soon. This revelation, this, this tribulation is not going to last forever. Praise and God. And so um, uh, they do have a following. They do have a, they get caught up later on uh, into heaven. We read about that. But then here in the book of Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9. After these things, this is after the marking I saw and behold a great multitude mm. which no man could number out of every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb arrayed in white robes and palms in their hands. And they cry with a great voice saying, verse 10, chapter 7, Salvation unto our God who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels were standing round about the throne and about the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing, blessing. and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving mm. and honor and power and might be unto our God yes. forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, me being John, the beloved, these are they... That these that are arrayed in white robes, who are they and whence came they? This great multitude that no man can number. Now, I'm sure God can number it, but no man can number it. That's Revelation 7, 9. After these things I saw and behold a great multitude which no man can number. Notice they're out of every tribe, every nation, every people, every tongue. And... Uh, so the angel asked John, who, who are these people and where, when do they, where do they come from? And of course, John doesn't know the answer. He says in Revelation 7, 14, I say unto them, my Lord, you know. And he said to me, these are they that come of the great tribulation. Mm. Now, the first three and a half years, there's seven years, but the first three and a half years, relatively speaking, yes. The church is gone, so they're not going to be perfect by any means. All kinds of evils and things will be happening. But the Antichrist doesn't make himself known and doesn't begin the great persecution uh, until the last three and a half years. And these are coming up out of the great tribulation. So you could say part one and part two. Right? Yeah, right. Uh, some people think that the church uh, is going through the first three and a half years of tribulation, but they're not. We've already proved that. We've already shown you that Good. they're in We're heaven. We're out of here. But there is a group that comes up in the midst of the tribulation. These are they, and they are the, uh, they, they've heard the 144,000. These are they that come of the great tribulation, 
and they have washed their robes, that's important, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and they serve Him day and night in His temple, and he that sits on the throne shall spread His tabernacle over them. They shall hunger no more. They've been where they hungered down in the great tribulation. Neither thirst any more. They've been where they thirsted. Neither shall the sun strike upon them, nor any heat. For the Lamb that is in the midst of the throne shall be their shepherd, and shall guide them unto fountains of waters of life, and God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. They've been where they've been crying. Mm -hmm. Now, this is from Hilton Sutton's book, Revelation Revealed, page 101. According to Romans 11, 25 and 26, all Israel will be saved. By using the means described in Romans 10, the 144,000 are to bring all Israel to salvation. In addition, many Gentiles are saved as well. Now this saving, this is my words, Billy Brim's word, is dispensational. I do not see in this great multitude that it is the new birth that places one in the bride of Christ. And I'm going to read to you from Hilton Sutton's page 104. The company of Revelation 7, the great multitude, differs considerably from the church company of Revelation 4 and 5. Jesus meets the church in the air. At the rapture of the great multitude, the dead are not resurrected. Once the multitude arrives in heaven, God hides away the remnant of Israel to prevent its destruction by the Antichrist. Those Jews on the earth who are called the remnant and they, are, they, did, not, they did not come in through the preaching of the 144,000. They're the remnant. God hides them. We're going to read more about that later. This is Hilton Sutton's words. The members of the church have crowns of gold, Glory to God. sit upon thrones, and sing the new song. None of this applies to the great multitude. Mm. The members of the church declare themselves to be kings and priests reigning with the Lord, whereas those of the great multitude are identified as Jews and Gentiles. Revelation 7 gives us tremendous insight into God's plan for the Jews during the first half of the tribulation. God continues to keep His word for both the natural seed of Abraham and Gentile believers. Bullinger's Bible points out the companion Bible. Bullinger makes the notes in it. They washed their own robes. It says they washed their robes in the blood. It's works and not grace. For comparison to the church, 1 Corinthians 6, 11 is writing about the church and it says... And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. So this group, this great group uh, that comes up, a great multitude, um, who are they? They're a special group. And they are not uh, totally identified with the church or with the bride, but they are there. God has different groups. The 144,000 is, is, is a different group. And so now uh, uh, they, they, they come up, I believe, by a rapture. And Hilton Sutton has pointed out that the Bible names seven raptures or catchings up. And, uh, and I put them down here. Enoch being the first, he was caught up without death. Elijah the second. Jesus, of course. The church, caught up in the rapture. The 144,000, those are coming up. This great multitude that no man can number. And later, the two witnesses. That's so interesting to see that all laid out. Yeah, so that is seven catchings up into Praise heaven. God. Bless the Lord. And now we're going to go to chapter 8 in the book of Revelation. Moving right along. Moving right along. Hallelujah. Staying organized over here with our pages. Where is chapter 8? Chapter 8. And we're only going to just start it. I don't have one. You don't have chapter 8A? Mm -mm. I didn't give you chapter 8A. Maybe that's it. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Check it out. Check it out. I shall see. Judgment of the nations. 
No, that's no, that, you're going to get that oh. one, too. You should have it, Gloria. So I'm just going to have to go on What's with What's the title of it? Chapter 8A, Revelation, Chapter 8A. Eight, eight eight. There you go. There Billy it is. Billy was right all the time. I had it. Okay. Bless the Lord. And you can guess that there's going to be an 8B. You know what? That makes sense. Uh-huh. Because we're going to start here in this Chapter 8, and we're, go we're getting over now into the, the Tribulation, the Great Tribulation. Revelation 8, 1. When the Lamb broke the seventh seal, remember Jesus had this scroll with seven seals, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Now think about it. All the time that we know of, the living creatures mm -hmm. have been continually circling, circling God and saying, holy, 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 and proclaiming His name. He who is, who was, who is to come. Jesse talks about them in his book that we've offered this time. They've been doing that without ceasing. Angels have been singing. Everybody who goes to heaven and comes back and gives a report of it, and boy, are there a lot of them these days, they always mention their music. The angels are singing. The saints are singing. There's always this melodious sound of music, but everything stops, and there is silence in heaven for half an hour. I don't know how God judges that length of time, half an hour. Mm -hmm. If it's earth's half an hour or heaven's half an hour. We're not told why. Uh, Hilton Sutton calls this one of, the, one of the questions, one of the unanswered questions about the book of Revelation, one of the mysteries. We're not told why. We can only guess. My guess is that heaven is silent in, in contemplation of the judgment and the wrath that's an, about to be released upon the earth. For the day of the Lord has come. Mm. And the day of the Lord, God has His total way. So it's come. Now, before we get to that really difficult, and we'll do that later, uh, judgment, we've, we've got to know why. And, and, and how is God justified in this judgment? We're going to be sure that we study to show ourselves workmen that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. We're going to rightly divide the word as to who's talked about when we see these judgments come, whether it's the Jews, the nations, or the church. We're going to judge time, past, present, and future. And we're going to see what things take place in heaven and what things are taking place in earth. Wow. And eventually we're going to get to um, the region of... Uh, the damned, the regions of the damned. Hell is compartmentalized. If we just want to call it all hell, we can. But it's got, it's got the abyss, the pit. It's got the lake of fire. And so we're going to rightly divide these things. One thing we have to remember as God is judging earth, the future is made up of judgment, but he's making earth, the future is as bright as it can be, but it does require some judgment of things in the earth. See, people just think there's not going to be any earth. There is going to be an earth. People say heaven and hell, it's not quite so simple. There's also earth. God has purposes for earth, so he has to judge it. He has purpose and place for the Jews, purpose and place for the nations. Hmm. He has future for earth, future uh, for the Gentiles, future for the Jews. And he has a future for heaven the heavens that, that, that are now inhabited by Satan and his um, spiritual rulers over lands, he has purpose for that. That second heaven is going to be shaken. That mid-heaven, we'll call it the mid-heaven, is going to be shaken. So we're now coming to a time that even, even heaven, it, it, it's really so that even heaven stands in awe of it. Awesome. The great tribulation. It's the time of God's judgment to prepare earth and to prepare its peoples for what will then be the immediate future, the thousand year, the millennial year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the numerical Bible points out, we must not merge Israel and the church. Who's on the earth is not the church, it's Israel and the nations, the Gentiles. 
We must not merge Israel and the church or forget even the purposes of God is to the earth. He has purposes in higher and heavenly ones. The true revelation to interpret prophecy can only be found, therefore, not in self-imagined canons, but by having before one the great promises of God. You see, when we see how things come out here in the end in the book of Revelation, we got to know what God said before. What he said in Genesis, what he said in Daniel. He challenges every thought of Israel's undoing. He's not through with Israel, especially with regard to Israel, his people, even to the times of the new heavens and the new earth. Thus, an interpretation of the book of Revelation, which practically, if not theoretically, leaves Israel out, cannot have the needed largeness, cannot give us the mind of God. And much of the book of Revelation, when people misinterpret it, it's because they have swallowed, perhaps, the old replacement theology, and they leave Israel out. You can't leave Israel out. They're here. Those, those, those 144,000 were the tribes of Israel. And Israel is on the earth, and the nations are on the earth, and the church is in heaven for the seven years. The earth also needs to come into the field of view. God has future for the earth. So when we look at the, big, at the book of Revelation, we got to remember that he's dealing with earth here and he's going to bring it out into perfection eventually. Everything God makes. The Bible says his work is perfect and everything is coming out to perfection. It'll be settled. It'll be settled. He begins in the book of uh, Genesis, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And every place uh, in the Old Testament, the word is plural, shemaim. So we have the heaven of heaven. We have the mid heavens. He created them all. He's bringing them all out into his perfection. Now, the numerical Bible says he ch challenges every thought of Israel's undoing. There are some that would have you think that God is through with Israel. They have no more plan unless they come into the church. That's not true. Um, thank God any Jew and any Gentile, when they come into the church, then they're born again, they're new creatures. But with the uh, natural seed of Abraham, he says this in Jeremiah 31, 35. And this is a chapter where he says he's bringing them back in the end of days. Thus saith Jehovah, I'm reading it to you, who gives the sun for a light by day and the ordinances of the moon and the stars for a light by night, who stirs up the sea so that the waves thereof roar. Jehovah of hosts is his name. If these ordinances depart from before me, the sun, moon, and stars, saith Jehovah, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Hmm. Thus saith Jehovah, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, then will I cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they've done, saith Jehovah. So that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Even in the Millennial reign, there's going to be sun, moon, and stars. So there will be a nation of Israel. They will have the rule over uh, Jerusalem. And um, Isaiah 2, 2. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of Jehovah's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. This is going to be during the millennium. This is the Mount Moriah and this is where the temple will be during the millennium that's described in Ezekiel uh, chapter 40 on. Isaiah 2, 3, And many people shall go and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain Je of Jehovah, to the house of the God of Jacob. He calls his physical seed Jacob. And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Jehovah from Jerusalem. Uh, and he will judge between the nations and will decide concerning many peoples and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they study war anymore. This is a look into the millennium. And in the millennium, it will be, I think Mike Evans wrote a book called Jerusalem, D.C. Take, take off on Washington, D.C. Mm. It'll be the capital of the whole earth. And there the rulers in that place will be this nation of Israel. Now we're gonna be over rulers. We're going to, and uh, you should read Macmillan's book, Authority of the Believer. Uh, I believe what he believes. We'll take the place of, of the heavenlies. We'll have that overrule that Satan now has usurped from Adam, and he should have had all the time. 
Uh, now, here is another look at as far as the new heavens and the new earth. Are we still going to find the Jews there? He's talking to Jacob in Isaiah 66, 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, saith Jehovah, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith Jehovah. And they shall go forth and look upon the dead bodies of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. So we've taken a look here and we find the Jews in the millennium, in the new heavens and the new earth. God is not through with earth. God is not through with the Jews. God is not through with the nations. But earth, the Jews, the nations must pass through judgment to prepare them for God's future purposes. David mm. Barron points out in his book and commentary on Zechariah that the last chapters um, cover two oracles that make up the time of the end chapters and they both treat of war between the heathen nations and the world. In the last sections of Jeremiah, uh, Zechariah chapters 9 through 11, it describes the judgment through which the Gentile world power over Israel is finally destroyed and Israel is endowed with strength. In the second part, chapters 12 through 14 of Zechariah, it describes the judgment through which Israel itself is sifted and purged in the final great conflict with the nations and transformed into the holy nation of Jehovah. They will have been uh, pured, purified during this Praise seven God. years. Bless the Lord. The last seven year cycle before the King Messiah returns and sets his feet on the Mount of Olives uh, in, in Zechariah 14 is what is happening on the earth in those seven years, the tribulation period is preparatory to his setting up the earthly visible kingdom and the millennial reign. Earth must be judged and prepared. The nations must be judged and separated, the sheep from the goats, and the remnant of the Jews must be prepared. So that's what we're going to see when we see the judgments that are coming up in the tribulation time. We're going to know so that the peoples who went through them and remain are, are fit to remain uh, to be in their places for the millennial reign. Praise God. Wow. The end will come and we want to be in the right place, the right side. We want to be at Jesus' side, one with Him. That's the safe place to be. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, just say it right now. Jesus. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Take my life. That's what I told him, and he did it. Take my life and do something with it. Glory to God. Billy and I will be right back. The scripture says this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. They won't Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. The 2013 Branson Victory Campaign, March 7th through 9th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Faith Life Church, Branson, Missouri. The 2013 Canada Victory Campaign, May 9th through 11th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at Hershey Center in Ontario, Canada. The 2013 Southwest Believers Convention, July 1st through 6th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and their special guests in Fort Worth, Texas. The 2013 Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign, November 14th through 16th with Kenneth and Gloria Copeland at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia. For more information, go to kcm.org slash events. Will I go to heaven? Does God still speak? What does the end times really mean? Is there really, really a heaven, heaven and, and hell? hell? What is heaven really like? Are we really in the end times? Will Jesus come back for me? Can I hear the voice of God? If you've ever asked any of these questions, this package has your answers. The thing that stood out to me the most is he says that many people are looking for the spectacular, but are missing the supernatural that's there all the time. And it just talks about how you can hear even that still small voice of God. I've never read anything that gives a more accurate and clear description of God's heart. And it was all wrapped up in Justin Tuplanus' description of heaven. It really changes your perception and understanding. 
Gloria Copeland and Billy Brim share answers to the questions you have about the end times and the book of Revelation. You can live free from fear when you understand your position. It's time to be prepared. Hearing from Heaven is how. Order the Hearing from Heaven package today for only $34 and enjoy a savings of over 30%. Increase your understanding about Heaven and of God's plan for your life. Be a willing vessel for God to use as you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395 or write to us today. For an additional 10% off, order the Hearing from Heaven package online. You want to get this package and when you get it, don't put it on the shelf, get into it because it will stir you up to be ready if you're not already ready and to stay ready. So it's the Hearing from Heaven package. Uh, it's uh, how you can be led by the Spirit of God by Brother Hagen, which is vital for these days. Uh, this is a book, uh, look at the book of Revelation with Billy Brim and Gloria Copeland, part two. And Jesse's book. CDs and oh, DVDs. Yeah, CDs are, and DVDs, both. Well, Good. you get either one. Either you one want. you want. And then Jesse's book on heaven. He's the only one of us have, of us that have been to heaven. And so you want, that's a package. You want to get it. Listen, this ought to sober you up. This ought to make you think about your future and what, what you need to do. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of oh your my. life, you are on the wrong side of this issue. And I want to encourage you right now. All you have to do is give yourself to Him. Just say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Take my life and do something with it. Glory to God. And then receive that and, and know that He is your Lord. Hallelujah. I didn't know very much when I got born again. And that's what I said. I just said, take my life and do something with it. I had no idea. You gave Him all you could give Him. What, <laughs> what that would mean. But it's been a marvelous walk, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. When you give yourself to Him, you get under the care of the Great Shepherd. Amen. He loves you, and He cares for you, and He wants you to grow in His Word and grow in faith. And there's nothing like having God in your life and knowing that when you need Him, if you have faith and receive the Word of God, He'll be there for you. Ken and I preached the Word of God for 46 years. Mm -hmm. You can learn a lot of things from Billy's website, from our website, a lot of material on there. Don't mess around. Get in the Word and find out the answers to the questions you've been searching for. Billy and I'll see you again tomorrow. And remember this, Jesus is yes, Lord. Learn who you are in Christ and how to begin your new life in victory. Request your free salvation package today at kcm.org. Jesus did it all for you. Receive His love and experience the good life God has for you. For additional teaching and free information on salvation, go to kcm.org. Continue to grow in God's Word with this week's Believer's Voice of Victory, available at kcm.org for purchase, streaming, or download. Let God's grace abound toward you and live in the blessing.